My waters broke with Remy. I packaged and delivered a customer's oh, order gosh, on the way did. to the hospital. Welcome to Power Moms Podcast. I'm so, so happy to be joined by <laughs> Tiffany Akumu from Raff and Remy. Um, I could probably go into a little bit about you, but would you mind going into a bit about you, telling us kind of <laughs> who you are, where you're from, how Raff and Remy started, what Gosh, you were doing before? That's a really, really, really long story. How much time do you have? <laughs> well, let me start. Limitless time. <laughs> let me start. Um, this is, sorry, this is the Raff and Remy part one of five podcasts, maybe then. <laughs> we'll just do the intro. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's keep it. Okay, first questions first. I'm Tiffany. I am the owner and creator of Raff and Remy. Um, I'm Australian and I've been living in Singapore for eight year, eight and a half years now with uh, my husband. We met here uh, it was like seven years ago. Do you want to share that story again? Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> um, just thinking my whole life is in Singapore. Um, both my boys, Raf and Remy, uh, who the business is named after, uh, were both born in Singapore. Um, Raf's three, Remy is about to turn one in about two weeks and I mean in terms of how the business started this is this is quite a long story yeah. um, well I've got a short version which is the truth is the fact that it was a hobby that just completely snowballed yeah. <laughs> escalated <laughs> just <quickly>. escalated <laughs> really fast um, so I mean the whole thing for me um, was I was struggling really with the idea of going back to work after the birth of Raphael. Okay. So and first baby comes. First baby came. Thought of going back to work. Yes. It's like, nah. I just, um, yeah, I was just struggling with the fact that, oh, there's so many moments I'm going to be missing out on. Like every mum, I think, out there has that yeah. feeling that, oh my goodness. You know, it's something that we can't avoid. As a mum, you want to be around as much absolutely. as possible, right? You I mean, I'm the sure that you can they're walking or relate. talking. Yeah, absolutely. I know. All of those things. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I just, I spoke to my husband about it and then I just sort of said, you know, I, I just have to start business and it's just a matter of when and yep. not if anymore. Yeah. And then um, I think it was about over like the next two years, I was kind of just discussing a new idea every, <laughs> like maybe f three times a week for, you know, that two years um, whilst working full-time whilst working I was I went back to full-time work when rap was um, four months and I ended up uh, leaving that job uh, when I was when rap was about ten and a half months and okay. um, we had like a bit of a, a helper change situation um, happening at the same time there's a few moving parts <clears throat> so I felt most comfortable just that just taking a step back yeah. and just making sure that I was home um, and then, yeah, and then I actually, I don't know, this is kind of, I'm kind of going off topic, but I, I started freelancing. I've been a designer my whole life, uh, my whole professional life. Anyway, um, so I started, you know, doing exactly what I was doing full-time work, but uh, for myself at home. Uh, and I was just, you know, freelancing my services around while I was able to be there for rough. Um, so kind of finding the nooks and crannies of your day to get the work done whilst being a full-time mummy. Right. I bet you were exhausted. <laughs> exhausted, still am. Um, I'm just getting better at surviving exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it was, you know, I, I did that for about a year um, while I was still trying to figure out what it really was that I, I just felt like I knew I was supposed to be doing something else, but I just yeah. didn't know what it was yet and I didn't want to rush that either. Um, so my husband and I just said, we're not going to start anything, you know, just for the sake of it. Like, yeah. it has to be something you're passionate about. And if it's not, like, it's not worth it. Yeah. Because you really have to treat a business like it is your, another baby, you know, if you really yeah. are trying to create something, you know, successful. Um, and sustainable that you're going to have that passion for. Exactly. In the long term. You've got to, yeah. you know, you fight for your kids, right? And yeah. you, you need to be able to fight for your business Absolutely. the same way. Otherwise, yeah. you're so much more likely to give up when it gets tough and hard and face all the obstacles you know yeah. that you absolutely will face um anyways mm -hmm. <laughs> so i i had my you know aha moment <laughs> when i was uh pregnant with remy and we had just named him in utero yeah. and um there was something about <laughs> Raph and Remy that just rolled off the tongue yeah. and then you know I sort of thought at the same time like 
I was always struggling to find certain products in Singapore. Um, I found it incredibly frustrating just trying to find things that were really designed for the tropical climate, you know, things that our babies feel really comfortable in, mm -hmm. um, but things that are also really well designed and, and really modern and um, so, I mean, safe and sustainability, like all of those keywords yeah. as well, like everything combined and even even done to things like packaging, like I'm a huge packaging consumer. Like I buy things because of the way they look and yeah. I feel like it's so special, especially in this time of people's lives that it is so special. Like it's, it just, like to, to know that women are receiving products that aren't, you know, arriving usually packaged to them. Yeah. Like, I just feel like there's a huge missed opportunity, you yeah, know, to absolutely. make that mom feel special because it is such a special time. And I think we felt so um, passionate about it as well because we had such a hard time getting pregnant ourselves. Okay. So the road to like um, conceiving Raph was, you know, really was quite long when we ended up going through a lot of fertility treatments, okay. you know. But it helps when I speak to women on a daily basis about things that they're going through. Yeah. Like I feel like you know I'm able to relate yeah. a lot. Um, so, so you know, with Remy as well, he was our he's our rainbow baby as okay. well. So the journey to conceive both boys was really tough yeah. and hard, and um, we lost our second pregnancy, you know, fairly early on. But it was just absolutely devastating. Like I, it's really difficult to put into words, but. Um, yeah, it was just one of those sort of life-changing moments. Um, we, and then Remy was actually a surprise conception five months later, okay. which, you yeah. know, without the use of any fertility treatments at all, it was actually quite so a miracle, yeah. right? I love these stories and people yeah. tell me these stories. Um, yeah, it's just insane. So that was, um, so it was just a like really, really special time for us. Yeah, um, and I guess it seems that you were able to, you were a mum now, yeah. and you were able to use your background in design, mm -hmm. and you saw this massive gap in the market. You had your well, aha moment. Well, I saw moment. it, but oh, yeah. I wasn't sure that other mamas, yeah. you know, saw it too. So that's what I mean, it started as okay. a hobby, yeah. and I sort of thought, you know, I just said to my husband, like, it wouldn't it be awesome just to create some products like for our special baby on the way like yeah. things that I really wish that I could find here you know uh, let's just design them and it'd be great to have the boys names on it like uh, amazing yeah um, we just want everything to be perfect you know when Remy arrived so like I started designing you know things that I you know want to be able to buy myself and then the sample started to arrive and I was like oh my goodness mm -hmm. like this is special like I think other mums will be interested in this yeah. like it, it, that, that's how it just started to snowball and then I would sort of like share I actually kept it really close to my heart like yeah. really hidden I didn't talk to anyone about this um, even t like until I don't know months and months went by and I, and I didn't mention it because it was just so personal and it was so like I, I was just in my element I was just enjoying it for what it was and that it was like a special time for us kind yeah. of thing and then um, yeah, I don't know. We, we launched the business in the end three weeks before Remy was born. And um, ca casually <laughs> launching a business. I was like, I've <laughs> done this before. I've had a baby before. Like, second time around, it shouldn't be as hard. Like, I think I know what I'm doing, which is the biggest lie. Like, I mean, yes, you know what you're doing, but like, it's more than double the work. Yeah. Um, and, but like. So you were like. <laughs> I was enormous. <laughs> Remy was um, born at 4.2 kilos. And I'm only small. I was going to say, if we both stood up, the <laughs> job we, is a bit of a... We, <laughs> we can do this without losing... Hi, everybody. I'm up here. I'm down here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so he was a big boy. I was enormous. I put on 25 kilos with both of my boys, actually. Um, actually, Raph was a cesarean. And we had an emergency cesarean with Raph. It's a whole... Another story for yeah. you. Another okay. day. And, and Remy was a, um, a V-back. Okay. That a was successful a V-pack successful that you took that 30 hours. Oh my God. So <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just so important to me to, you know, give it a crack. Yeah. Um, and you persevered for persevered 30 hours. Persevered for wow. 30 hours. It was, I couldn't have done it without my husband. It is like such a team yeah. sport, giving birth, isn't it? Like, oh my goodness. We're a big fan of power dads here at Power Moms. Ah, <laughs> great. We'll get your husband on for one. Definitely. <laughs> I mean... Uh oh! 
So I think this is what happens in this household, yes. is there's deliveries going out all day. Yes. Of people getting their gorgeous gifts. And my little <laughs> tiny Japanese Spitz thinks she's in charge of protecting the entire house. <laughs> And so when you, what gave you the final, what gave you the confidence to think I can do this? My husband. Yeah. My husband was just like, go for it. Like I've, I've, I've got your back. I've got your back. Yeah. Like this is, and I also knew it was my passion. And yeah. I was just like, I just remember so clearly one night just being like, we had just placed this big order for like, I worked on seven products to begin with. Just placed big order, um, you know, to put everything into production. And we would just look to each other and we're like, we're all in now. Yeah. Like, we're completely self-funded. Like, everything that we put into the business is directly earned by myself and my husband. Like, there's, um, so it's like a big risk that yeah. we were taking. And then we just sort of went like, let's have fun with this. Like, mm -hmm. this is, we know how good this product is. We know people need this as well. Like, yeah. it's just, you're all in go for it that's amazing and then like every every time i ever had like self-doubt my husband's always there like in my corner being like no you got this like yeah. you know because we are our own worst critic and like we're so tough on ourselves mm -hmm. like oh my goodness Definitely. um you really need someone in your corner just being like no no baby you got this yeah. like you know what's his role in the business <laughs> <laughs> my husband is oh my gosh he's got a full-time job um, so my husband supports me when he can, which is, um, you know, in the evenings and weekends and, you know, we all work around the clock in this house. <laughs> there's no things as off days. There's no such things as, you know, weekends, public holidays. I wouldn't even know the difference between Monday and Saturday, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that's how, I think that's how it goes when you have a business, you know, at least for the first few years. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, it's our passion. Like, it is my passion, 100%, and my husband you know he's just thrilled with how things are going and he you know he's so great with um he's got such a mind for business like he really can see opportunities and like help me to sort of um understand how to like take a meeting or like that kind of thing like speaks to me in terms of like you know these are the I'm sorry i'm getting distracted because all i can hear is remy crying <laughs> um why do, do you know what? This is a good time. Yeah. We'll take a quick pause yeah. and then we'll come back with the babies. Okay. Hey! We're joined by a little friend who's little just friend. woken up. Look at those eyelashes. Hello. Hello. Fun fact. When I, um, my waters broke with Remy, I packaged and delivered a customer's oh, order on the way did. to the hospital. Guys, that is customer service. That is <laughs> <laughs> passion. That was, was it know, on actually, the way to the hospital? On the way to but was the, it on the way to the hospital? Oh, oh um, yeah, it was actually just kind of a few streets <laughs> away. Um, we were living in Booker Timor at the time. No, it was. It's, it, but like, I was... I'm such a, I don't know, maybe this is how you have to be when you're running a business. I was just kind of like, I can't make my customers wait. Just know, because three I'm days, having a baby. Like, they're going to get what want to exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be in labor for 30 hours, potentially. Exactly. So, <laughs> so lucky I did drop it off. Yeah. Otherwise, that customer would have been waiting a very long time. Um, I've actually got it on video. <laughs> and I, can, I, I can't show you guys, <laughs> but I could, I'd be happy to show you later. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah, this little such boy a came. good, funny memory. We were talking about your husband. Yes. And we were saying yes. he does a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. To make everything involved. roll smoothly. Yeah. He's very good at seeing, overseeing operations. And he's very good at... Um, Chief of operations. Chief of operations. Chief of operations. He can have any title <laughs> that he wants. Um, can he have CEO? <laughs> except that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he gets involved when he can. But as I mentioned, he's got a full-time job. A very demanding full-time job on its own. So. I do feel a little bit bad sometimes. He finishes one job and then he comes home yep. um, and then I ask him to sit down to have the next meeting with me. And you know, I'm we bounce off ideas, everything. Like yep. everything I do, I, I write it down in notes and then we discuss like everything as it comes home. So like, okay. we don't make a decision without running it by yeah. each other. So we're both very involved. Obviously I'm the front hand man mm -hmm. and the only full time staff member of Raf and Remy for yep. this entire for year for now. Um, I think you're going to need people soon. Well, <laughs> the thing is, we do use partners. We have a, a, a beautiful family business that we use um, for all of our embroidery services, and they just do exquisite, high-quality work. Um, and quickly we as love well, because quick. I noticed when I went to do an order a few weeks ago, it said, like, customization, <laughs> two days? 
or something? Because yeah. normally you're like, customization, lead time, two to three weeks. And you're like, it's only a name, but yours is super, super quick. Well, it's actually, I do put that there as a little bit of buffer, but we are at the moment doing personalization every morning. So wow. we get them done every morning and we turn around, ho hopefully by the afternoon for some people as well. That's amazing. Um, so, you know, it, yeah, w that's just one partner that we work with. So they, they help. They help me out a lot because yeah. I think if I, I mean, I don't have the time to do it myself, but I would love to learn to do it myself one day as well. But you know, I can't do absolutely everything. But um, no. and then you know, other things like all the social media, all the website design, yeah. product design, all of the you know stuff, Ooh. install liaisons, and um, you're doing it all. Everything, everything you can wow. think of. Um, and you, because I'm interested to know, yeah. you started online. Yes. It was an online business. Yes. And now you're not an online. You're not purely an online <laughs> yeah. business. No. This where is, is your. <laughs> tell us where. Where can we get rough and ready? Oh, where? Well, where can we, where well, can I'm we gonna, find I'm these? I'm going to as I leave. Well, <laughs> Remy is currently modelling our newly launched premium bamboo zippies. <laughs> Remy is um, turning one at the end of the month, and this is six to twelve months. That and he's currently still, wearing. Yeah, and there's still space to grow. There's still space to grow. Yeah. <laughs> so these are online only at the moment, but our other range, like everything else, can be found in um, Tang's at Tang mm. Plaza, um, mm. Robinson's, mm. the Heron in Orchard, mm. and we've just launched into Mother's Work, uh, Great World City, and Tanglin Mall. Uh, oh, actually, Amazing. we've also got a selection of goodies at Mother and Child in Tangram Mall as well. Oh, wow. So, I didn't know that. Yes. Our Amazing. onesies and knotted gowns are there. Um, so, you woo, would so, you so like so to get getting out and about? Milky. Getting out and about. Yeah. And what has been, has there been any obstacles um, to you? <laughs> well, every day. Sorry. Yeah. I, I should be a bit more specific. Um, Baby on the way. Remy can just Come walk. Back. She's not even one and Rem. he's just walking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so distracting, aren't yeah, they? See, like try, try. And there's no way that we're going to crop that baby out of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like the selling factor. People are like, I don't know what they were talking about for half an hour, but that kid was cute. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> have another meltdown. We can mm. always have a pause if we need to. <laughs> so obstacle, okay, obstacles mm. to as a as a woman, as a working mum in Singapore. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any obstacles to launching a business? Our biggest obstacle um, wasn't the fact that I'm a woman or in Singapore um, necessarily, was um, the fact that all of our manufacturers are in other countries in Asia. So, and I don't speak the local language. So the identifying who was going to share the same um, standards. vision, standards, uh, the quality is so important to us. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, like earlier off camera, we delayed the launch of an entire our entire newborn essentials collection. We delayed the launch of that by four or five months because we didn't feel like it was up to our standard what we had, you know, received and what, what as per, like as opposed to what was discussed. Um, so that's a huge, huge factor um, for us. Quality is everything. So that's probably the biggest thing: finding people that we could trust yeah. and that we can rely on because. At the end of the day, that that is the product that's going out, you know, to the customers. Customer satisfaction is everything, yeah. uh, and we just don't want to compromise on quality any time at all. Yeah. So that's um, that's really the only thing. Uh, everything else, I think, is roadblocks that you yourself put in your own way, in your own mind. <laughs> exactly. Support, like I can't do this, or exactly. Oh, okay. And like at the longer it went on, um, the more I realized in myself um, that. It was. It's all in your head, yeah. <laughs> you know. And yeah. you just like, and, and when you have one small win, it makes the next small win easier. Until you know, you, you get into a rhythm of like, you know, just overcoming obstacle and you knowing that you you know you can face it head on. And you're gonna have obstacle. You're going to mess up. You're gonna have. Yeah. You know, you're, everyone has to go through and deal with these things. But like, yeah, you just start to realize that you're in charge of it. Like you're just. I mean, it's so empowering, like just to be like, I'm just going to go for the next thing because I've done that, and yeah. I, I'm going to go for the next thing, and and why not? And you get that bit of a buzz, right? Absolutely. Like we were talking about podcasts, yeah. you get that <laughs> buzz from doing it. You're like, oh, I want to speak to this person. I want to speak to this person, exactly and, and it's like addictive. That. Exactly. And, like and, that. That, and that's a great thing. And you just need to start. Like that's the thing. You just. Is that your top tip? 
Oh my gosh. Just do it. There's never a right time. I always say it's never a right time, kind of like having kids. Um, <laughs> so why not have, have a kid start? and launch a business at the same time? Don't do that. Don't be a crazy person. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think though, at the end of the day, if what you've chosen to do is your passion, yep. like it's not going to feel like work and it's going to be like, it should be an extension of you. Mm -hmm. I think that's why it works so well. And I'm able to actually do both at the same time. Yep. Because let me tell you, I don't really get much sleep. You know, I'm working by five o'clock every morning. I'm working every night when my kids go to bed. As I mentioned, no public holidays, maternity leave, um, any of that sort of stuff. Like I, but what I'm doing, I am so passionate you about it. You wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. And yeah. that's, just, that's the difference I think. Yeah. And do you now feel like I can do anything? Have you had that moment? Oh, I, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, yes and no. Like, I think that, I don't know. Like, I think you could probably get too carried away in thinking, I think it's always good to be grounded. Mm -hmm. Like, you always got to be, remember that um, you're only one, you know, you can fall really quickly and, you know, it doesn't take much this day and age for, yeah. you know, things to fall apart mm -hmm. or crumble or whatever. Like, so I think that it's, while like, you should always feel like you're, able to go out there and achieve anything like I, I also like to maintain a little bit of just not like a, re not a little bit of reality but like I always like to think don't get too far ahead of yourself almost because yeah. it can be it can go away very quickly as well like yeah. just be conscious and just be humble and, and just really understand and ble be blessed in every situation that's happening yeah. you know like don't take it for granted yeah I'm not gonna go like ground, but also <laughs> you've got to feel like <laughs> you've made this work, right? Right. And you've made it work, so you must think in five years. I'm not going to be, <laughs> Tiffany, what is your five year plan? But you've got to think, if I've managed to do this yeah. in one year, where yeah, could it yeah, go? Have crazy. you got any ideas? Are you keeping I your cards this, close to your no, chest? No, I say this to my husband. And he's, he goes, five, because I always say, oh, in five years, imagine. And he's like, five years? He's like, what about the next five weeks? Because <laughs> yeah. things are moving so quickly. Like, um, it's. You know, the momentum is just really. Yeah. Well, you've got to go with go with the flow, right? While there's go the momentum. With it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But in five years' time, I mean, what do I see for the business? I mean, at the moment, our house is. You know, I store everything here. I okay. like everything is like here. So it's like home. It's office. Yeah. It's warehouse. It's everything okay. like that. So I but think it's a gorgeous house. Yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty. Um, and then. In five years, I think I definitely have a warehouse. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I would definitely love to have. You mean you want your guest bedrooms back? <laughs> <laughs> Selfish me. <laughs> uh, I would love to have a group of really awesome people, just like working together in Singapore yeah. to distribute everything around the world. Like I would love to keep it close, and yeah. I would love to keep it home because yeah. this. I mean, Singapore is our home. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, you know, outsourcing that in another country for, you know, yeah. I mean, and that can happen. Who knows? This it can happen, I guess, because for you, because it's, it's cool. all grown from yourself. Yeah. To then Let really give that to control. someone else. I'll say the customer service. Well, how, how will I word this? <laughs> Tiffany's customer service is second to none. If you ever have a question about her product, she will, she's on it. So I do. I love talking that power with might be tricky. The customers. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, but, but as you just said, like, I, I love speaking to my customers and customers that have become friends like yourself. Like there are women that I have met like in this journey of motherhood and like Raph and Remy related, yeah. you know, through Instagram or whatever it is. Like these genuine connections that we're building, which I think is another point of difference for our brand is yeah. that it is about, it's more than baby gifts. Like it is a community yeah. of women supporting women yeah. and like parents, you know, learning and sharing, you know, things, you know, within what it is really like to be a parent, like honest conversations, honest. open conversation, not <laughs> yeah. just a product, you know, it's more, it's a bigger picture type of yeah. thing. Um, Which from a, sorry to jump in, but that's yeah. like power mums. That's what we want. We want this community of people Perfect. Um, and services and yeah. products. And I think that, and we've become parents. So the more, as, yeah. we, as we're learning what we thought Power Moms was while I was pregnant and what I think Power Moms could oh, be now is completely different. Exactly. So yeah. let me ask you the question, where yeah. do you see Power Moms in five years? Take like, over the world. <laughs> I mean, I never really finished answering your question, which was, you know, it'd be nice to have the warehouse and like people yeah. to help, you know. Yeah. Um, once I figure out how to release some control. Um, but I... I really do see Raph and Remy as a household name in Asia. Like yeah. that is where I want to take it, but not just for products and you know 
you know, baby gifts and all those things that, you know, we're, we're very well known for at the moment. Like, I, it needs, it, there is a, I feel like it, it's bigger than that. Like, it is a community. Yeah. It is a, it is connections with one another. And yeah, the amount of people that I have become great, close friends with, customers have become friends. And even, because, um, you know, from, um, <laughs> the award that I just won, and I don't, I don't mean award. to plug myself, sorry. <laughs> sorry to flex on this. Um, she only <laughs> had one demand, and it was that we spoke about, no, I'm joking. <laughs> they asked the question about, um, you know, what does the award mean? It was um, uh, last Tell week. Tell us about the award. Please do, week. please do, because I was going to bring it up. <laughs> last week, um, I found out that I won the Expatpreneur of the Year Award uh, in Singapore from The Finder. And they did ask the same question, like, what does the award mean to you? And um, I just sort of thought, like, everyone, obviously, all businesses and business owners want to feel validated that, you know, their hard work mm -hmm. and their efforts and in their business and communities are, like, you know, being recognized. Like, that's a great feeling for anyone. But even more than that, like events like that or awards like that, like I hope that other women see that kind of thing and go, oh, I'm gonna go chase my dreams. Like that is more important to me. Like the, yeah. how, that, how other people feel about their dreams and goals as moms, yeah. as you know, women in business, like it is so attainable. These things are so attainable. If you work your absolute tushies off, yeah. you know, you can really do anything. Yeah. And what excites me is the women who reach out, um, actually, and men, um, mainly women who reach out saying, you know, I wanted to start my own thing. Yeah. Um, how'd you do it? Where do I start? Like that kind of, just like, you yeah. know, giving that kind of advice, like that is. That's awesome. Just like, you well, know. I think you're very inspiring for a lot of people. A lot of people see your product and then mm. learn about your story, right? And right. then I think you're way more likely to be interested in a product if you like the story, right. you know, and, and it is super inspiring for people to think, well, you started this a year ago as you were about to give birth. You dropped off a delivery on the way to your delivery. <laughs> like, that's yeah. amazing. And I think, that yeah. would, I think that would inspire so many women and men, for sure. So I think you've, you've done a lot in a year. I don't think as many Thanks. people are probably as driven as you, but I also <coughs> think maybe people struggle to find their passion. Mm. And I think you obviously decided that you were going to find your passion, you have found your passion, and you're going to make it work. And I think that's why you're, you're so successful. Thank you so but much. But I am that the biggest so nice. number one <laughs> Raph and Remy and Tiffany fan. <laughs> <laughs> for oh, sure. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, and I think we've got heaps of content that we can do more and more podcasts oh, if you're willing to join us. But like, that's exactly right. Like, there are so many more topics that can be discussed. Everyone's got their stories. Everyone's right? got their stories, yeah. and I think it's you know really empowering when we as like a women in the community just start like sharing them all. Because I mean, I just recently posted about um, my my sister's. Uh, latest my number four was born yeah, yeah. she's number four yeah. born um, at 30 weeks and it was just like a really touch and go situation and they both nearly we nearly lost both of them yeah. um, after a placental abruption which is something that I'm learning about now I didn't yep. know about um, it's and, something and that causes a lot of blood loss a lot of blood loss she lost half of her blood in her entire body and had yeah. two blood transfusions um, you know, mom nearly was nearly lost and baby was nearly lost because yeah. that usually kills baby straight away yeah. and they swallow blood and all that kind of thing and it was really I mean a miracle yeah. it's an absolute miracle yeah. there are things that like I'm learning about premature babies about you know things like you know, complications that I never experienced and that's you know really I would love to be informed the next time it happens like for you know someone else like just by sharing stories and conversations and being yep. open honest and that kind of thing and you know but you know when it comes to like um, cesareans VBAX miscarriage fertility um, yeah. been there and like that is you know just sharing these stories with other women like everyone it just provides so much healing I feel like you know I think it's very therapeutic very and I think therapeutic. it's very um, for someone going through that situation that might look at you and yeah. be like Tiffany's got it all together you know like right. Tiffany's got this busy she's got these gorgeous kids <laughs> you know and they wouldn't know your struggle no but to hear your struggle right. will be empowering for them right. and healing for them and 
I think it's so important. Well, as power moms, that's, we want to talk about stuff. We, we, we want to have like a no holes barred kind of approach. Right. Of course, within reason. Like we, we don't want everyone. No, I want to know about every <laughs> little itty gritty detail. Um. <laughs> You're going to start doing like, I want you to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but you know, I remember when I was first going through the the issues, the, you know, I, you know, wasn't able to get pregnant, that kind of thing. Like I thought I, that I was unnormal. Like I thought that was wrong with me. Yeah. Like, and I didn't know, I never really heard, like I've literally just posted about this. So it's fresh in my mind. Like, um, you know, I wasn't really aware of women struggling. I didn't I, like to get pregnant. Yeah. I never knew. There are so many things I feel like we're not taught. And so many things that people feel ashamed to speak about. So you don't hear, yeah. you know, the hard, stories uh, you from hear people. of the people that left it until their mid 40s and then struggled don't hear about the people in their 20s and 30s that have nothing physically wrong with them but can't There's get no pregnant reason. exactly and I know I know myself I know people that you know a handful of people yes but that's affected this is it you yeah. want you start talking about opening up then yeah. everyone starts going oh hang on I want to talk to you about this like, in the, like it's so common yeah and this is what started to make me feel not better but like not so <laughs> isolated was yeah. when I was like, oh my gosh, this happens, you know, within like a, you know, five kilometer radius, there's probably like 25, like, you know, there's like a huge yeah, amount of people who are definitely. going through exactly the same thing. Um, and for some reason, you know, I think it's starting to change now, but the suffering and silence mentality, I think is like, it's ended. Yeah. Like people want to, yeah, you know, the sh talk. and the shame needs to go. Has because to go. Because it's stuff that affects so many people so many and there's the stuff from going through childbirth that's affected me that i'm still not comfortable talking about like right. that will be affecting other people well, this <laughs> is it though this is the other side of the coin right so you have a story and you have you know um there will come a time where you might want to share it and maybe you never will but to say that like you reading something that someone else has written about what you're going through, that is, you haven't even got a comment, like, or nothing. Like, yeah. You've just seen it. And I'm sure that has touched your life in some way, right? Yeah. That's what I mean. It hasn't always got to yeah. be like, because not everyone is, I'm, I'm quite a confrontational, like, I'm, I'm quite like, uh, I don't mind putting myself out there, yeah. you know, I, um, but not everyone's like that, and yeah. that is so fine. Yeah. But I, I am very aware that that happens, you know, quite often as well. You know, but it's just a matter of, you know, some people will read and see things that are, you know, being said and discussed and, and they'll take away exactly what was needed yeah. with that, yeah. that person ever all, knowing. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But so to give a bit of, we're basically saying knowledge is power. So as long as the information right. is out there That's right. in a variety of ways, yes. it will reach somebody and it will reach somebody that needed to hear That's it. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Boom. Okay. Boom. Mic note, drop. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't I won't take it off. She'll kill me. Then we, <laughs> then we flash and then we get more viewers. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining oh, us. Pleasure. Thank you for having and me. And I hope we can have you back. Good power moms. And you said on the top two floors is yes. where all your stash is, yes. right? Yes. Cool. See you later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. This has been really fun.